Hi, everyone. Welcome to my book talk. Like, welcome to my TED talk, but it's welcome to my book talk. Isn't that funny? Laugh. Um, just kidding. Hi, everyone. How's it hanging? Oh, no, we're already fighting. <laughs> we're already fighting. <laughs> Anyways. I'm in a good mood today, so I can handle the fighting. Hey, Roger. Hey, Azos. Oh, I didn't post on Discord. Sorry. One second. Let me just let everyone know that I am live. How's everyone doing today? I came prepared today. Thank you, Tom. Um, I couldn't stand it. So when I can't stand it, I just put clips. Do you like my microphone stand? Oh, hey, Chongo. I saw you yesterday. Alyssa, hello. I saw you yesterday, too. Um, I'm doing well. Yeah, can't complain. I'm home alone. I don't know if I should say that. I am, though. Um... Yuna's outside. Yuna was just in here. I don't know what he's doing. Probably something suspicious. Haley, hello. Good to see you. Edward, yay. I can recognize you, not from just your username, but from the way that you enter to chat and say hello. Hi, Common Writer. How do y'all do? I'm doing good. I'm excited for this. First YouTube book talk. I think it's gonna be fun. Um, and if anyone is reading something else currently, I feel like that would be a cool little drop and chat. So uh, I finished this last night, but after I immediately started reading The Outsider by Stephen King, because I have a, uh, how many Stephen King books have I read? One, I just have read The Stand. Um, and I loved it. So I ordered some more of his from Thrift Books. And The Outsider seemed really creepy. So I'm reading that now. Hi, Maylith. Hey, Brandon. Good to see you. Hi, Arthur Morgan. Northlander. Yes. So exciting. Y'all are nerds. We're all nerds here. Hi, Rainus. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm reading right now, and it's creepy and I like it. I haven't read any other Assassin's Creed books because I just really wanted to read this one. I think it's cute that it's mainly, it's like Haytham's diary, but that's Connor on the front, right? And then he's in the back. Have a good work, Lurk. Hey, Northern. Hi, Sergio. Oh. Let me edit that. So sorry. So sorry. That's weird. Cute that it's me. That's me. That's I just, Connor on no, the No, 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 no. I just... <laughs> Can I just share it? Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Wait, I want to see if anyone's talking in Twitch chat. <laughs> I can't live stream on both places. Hi, Julio. The book cover is reversed. I know because I flipped my camera. So I know like if I when I see myself, it doesn't freak me out so I can feel more comfortable looking at myself, because usually I see myself in a mirror. I don't think anything about uh, Assassin's Creed Unity because I haven't played it. I haven't played it. I'm so excited. I don't know. Guys, I don't know where it takes place. I don't know who the protagonist is. And I want to keep that to a minimum. Why I got this recommendation? I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think YouTube thinks I'm cool or something. Here in Brazil. Oh, I did a bang. 
11, 63. Oh, nice. That would be cool if it involves history and stuff because I'm reading Assassin's Creed. Um, I like scary books. I'm in a weird phase where I'm interested in some horror. Hi, Jam. Favorite AC so far? That's really hard for me to answer because I feel like I like them for different reasons. Um, but in terms of what I would like pick up right away again, probably Brotherhood. I'm American. I live in Ireland. Nice. Hi, Tech. Yeah, I just have no clue. So we're going to start Rogue on Sunday and I'm going in completely blind. I want to keep it that way. Rogue will be madness Meg Mage wise. I'm sure. Um, also, something that I would pick up again right away would be Assassin's Creed 3 because knowing what I know about Haytham and knowing the twist. Oh, thank God my medicine is ready. Sorry. Um, if you take ADHD meds, the shortage in the US has been absolutely bonkers. <laughs> oh my gosh, Jonah, thank you for the super chat. Charlie, thank you. Um, my my hair is I don't really like my hair today um <laughs> but it ends up like if, when I don't like it then I end up putting clips in it best book I've read made me really understand Heath more thank you for the five dollar super chat um I really liked it I really liked it so I <laughs> I came with a couple of pages books bookmarked and also some notes because I have no chill no chill oh it's shorter oh, okay it was priced at 60 bucks on release how much is it now hi Celtic I know I'm so happy oh my gosh what a relief so, yeah, I have chaotic notes. But I want to remember, because if you have ADHD, it's hard to remember things unless you write them down or put them somewhere. Um, the first thing I want to say is that I wish we had another game. I wish we had another game. Um... I'm glad that we have this book to supplement, but I kind of wish Haytham had his own game. Hi, Shin. Yeah, I think so, Haley. I, I definitely think so. This book actually made me more interested in George Washington. Like Haytham's perspective on George Washington made me interested in that DLC. It's, it's interesting. Cause I was like, I didn't really care. I was like, uh, oh, George Washington. Cause like, I don't know. The U.S. hypes him up and hearing Haytham's honest thoughts about him. I'm like, wait, I kind of want to play that. Viking! Hello! Oh, I definitely will, Chongo. So, um, yeah, I feel like a whole game dedicated to Haytham would have been really cool but I also know that it was effective to learn through Connor's eyes I don't know I do really like Assassin's Creed 3 the ending is devastating but that's just what happens in in history I guess like they can't change history um I just wish there was a bit more time for Haytham and maybe Zio you know Okay, awesome. Yeah, like the book was the book was good, obviously. And this character, I just feel like I missed stuff with this character. Um, and I'm grateful that the book exists, but it just would have been nice to like or even have his journal 
maybe a DLC or something at the end where you can read through his journal. Um, and maybe there's a mission where you're just like figuring out stuff about your dad as Connor. I don't know, something. Older Edward and Haytham, right. Like anything, we just got a little glimpse with them at the opera. Oh, an epilogue comic. Oh yeah, I really actually, I would love that. Um, I would love to know what exactly happens with him because like, I don't even know how he can continue the lineage. Like, I don't know who he ended up with. Um, and interesting that Haytham's mom was just kind of random woman. A Connor sequel over Haytham. Haytham has a case for the best Kenway. Still think he loses to Edward, but he has a case. Oh my gosh, you're going to start fights. You're going to start fights. I will say it was really cool to play as Haytham and then, you know, play as Connor and hear Haytham say things. And then to have the thought process behind it, it was like so... It was so different and there was so much more because he really considered what he said um, and it made perfect sense to me. So it, it is cool to see the game and the book universe be so in sync. It's satisfying. Oh, we see him writing in a journal in the beginning. Hi, Ringy. Yes. So I'm actually on rogue i played everything for the first time up until rogue so we finished assassin's creed 4 and then i finished forsaken oh i want to read the prologue again because okay so it's extracts from the journal of haytham e kenway so his middle name was edward i don't know why i don't have the oh prologue I never knew him, not really. I thought I had, but it wasn't until I read his journal that I realized I hadn't really known him at all. And it's too late now, too late to tell him I misjudged him, too late to tell him I'm sorry. So that's Connor, right? Yes, I would love to, after we discuss the book, I would love to watch some of that back again like the monologue and maybe the end scene. Let's start from the beginning. Um, Baby Haytham is goaded. Baby Haytham is a gangster. Uh, I think it's really cute how much she loved his dad. I think it's really, really cute. He, <laughs> the thing is, I knew instantly I was gonna be, I was gonna feel some type of way because as someone who was isolated as a kid, and relied on books and just solitary play and feeling like you're in this kind of glass house, this bubble. Um, I, I related to him and I, I just knew, like he was, he's just so cute. And he didn't, like his sister was however many years older than him. So <laughs> he was just on his own, but he loved, it's just really cute how much he loved his dad. Like he was obsessed with him. Um, and clearly Edward was just wanting to give them such a, an easy life, I guess. Like he didn't want them to struggle. And I think still that motivation of money and having them be financially stable, and stay kids and whatever was still in the back of his mind and influencing his parenting choices. Um, but I know we've talked a lot about <laughs> like the parents of the assassins and like what we think is a better decision in terms of parenting. Like, do you keep it from them for a while? Like Giovanni let his kids be kids for a while and um, Edward was kind of doing the same thing, but then it really cost Haytham his understanding of things. Baby Haytham coming out of his mom saying, a thousand pardons. Face baby Haytham. Hi, disaster. Hi, Ignacio. So I don't know, like 
part of me thinks he should have told him sooner, but then I do understand just wanting him to be a kid. But then also, he certainly was old enough to kind of have a conversation of like, why am I not hanging out with other children? Why am I not playing with other children? Why do people look at us weird? Because that was happening. Like people were, they knew who Edward was and they kind of judged the family and he didn't have any friends. And I think that's a, a huge reason why he kind of stayed in the Templar order, even when he figured out all the betrayals and stuff. Got more violent, brutal at the end than at the beginning. The book explains it great. Yes. Giovanni goaded Assassino dad. Yeah. And maybe it's, I don't know, because he told his, well, no, no, Giovanni told uh, Frederico, right? Uh, Ezio's older brother. Because that was supposed to be the heir. Yes, I'm going to read Black Flag, definitely. But I don't know. I think <laughs> Edward, he, I mean, he was training him. I just don't think Edward even considered, like, do I explain assassins and Templars? And like, I just don't think he even imagined he would be killed in his home. And it was, <laughs> it was killed in such a brutal way. <sighs> I don't even think that crossed his mind. Um, I know I asked that, Chango, um, and we'll definitely get to that. It was interesting. I was I, like, he stuck with the Templars, but I have my own thoughts. Oh, and then what about Tessa? Like, what about his mom judging him as a kid for stabbing her attacker in the face? Like... Girl, I get it. You don't want to see your 11-year-old stab someone in the face. But she was about to die. Like, I think she had her own mental health issues going on. It just makes me really sad, that whole sequence where he's... Like, she doesn't even call for him. So his sister gets kidnapped. He watches his dad die. He almost watches his mom get murdered. And he saves her by stabbing someone in the face. And then she never looks at him the same way again because he saved her. And I understand there's like the mental illness and like mental stuff of like, why did you save me? It sh I should have died along with everyone else. Um, but why didn't anything kick in of this is my baby? You know, and just like he's at he's a child. He's a minor. You can't give him a hug. That's not unconditional love. That's really messed up. Yeah, in the eyeball, but he was trained to do that. And she knew he was trained to do that. Like his dad was training him for a reason so he could protect people in his family, right? Like she knew about that. And it just, that's very conditional love to me. I miss Caroline, let's just say. You you think Mary Reed, if she was about to die and then her daughter or her son stabbed her attacker in the eyeball, she'd be like, good job. <laughs> like you can have your, your own feelings about it. But then just, just, I don't know, get over yourself and mother your child. She just sent him away. I know. Oh, I mean, it was an impossible situation. I just think it was really sad to me. And I didn't understand why she couldn't love him and him. And like kids can tell. Kids can tell when you see them differently. And that just made a lot of sense. So Jenny, Jenny was kidnapped and she was kind of like sold as a concubine and they didn't rescue her until she was like in her 40s, I believe. Um, and she was in Damascus. <laughs> oh, I think it's interesting in the books that Edward and Jenny have black hair. 
I'm assuming that Haytham was supposed to kind of be the look of Edward. But I like that he's blonde. Yeah, you didn't do it for fun. <laughs> like, oh, let me stab someone in the eye. Um, let's see if I understand my notes. Haytham didn't care about being a Templar like Edward didn't care about being an assassin. Yeah, I think that's... I feel like the Kenway saga is so interesting because especially with Edward and Haytham, they really don't give a shit about those titles. I think Edward maybe later in his life... Yeah, he... Yeah, later in his life. He really believed in the creed. Um, but... Connor was mentored from such a young age and Haytham too. But for the most part, he was like critical of Templars and he didn't care. Like he would find out that Edward was an assassin and like didn't bother him. He was like, okay, and like, you, what? <laughs> and I like that they kind of mirrored each other with that. And we heard a little bit about well, we heard a little bit from Haytham in the game about how he was just like, Templar assassin, doesn't matter. It's very similar, yada, yada, yada. Like, he even says towards the end of the book, and I dog-eared it, but he was like, I don't even know what I am. Like, I'm very in between. One second he didn't and the thing with his him watching his dad die was he didn't know it was assassins he didn't know it was templars and he was smart enough like edward taught him to like rise above and not to think critically and not label it so he just didn't feel any type of way and it made me realize it made me have like a kind of awakening that from all the games I've played so far, for the most part, it's been like, let's kill some Templars. Fuck you, Templars. And granted, most of the Templars deserved it and they were very corrupt. But now I'm like, oh no, maybe they didn't reflect the order. <laughs> maybe they didn't reflect the order accurately. That's what Haytham did to my brain. Um, Haytham and Holden rescued Jenny. Yeah, his objective opinion was the Templars, right? Oh, Birch fucking sucks. Oh, yeah, I can read the Webtoon series now. Edward taught him critical thinking. And that has always been my opinion. Edward has always been smart. Like, I know I joked in calling him a himbo and all that, but he's always been smart. He just kind of either tucks it away or it's like, almost street smarts <laughs> like socially smart and also don't trust everyone don't believe everyone always have you know i just i love that he taught him that um and it served him where the hello is this quote so it really is awesome I had begun to think of myself not so much as a Templar, but a man with assassin roots and Templar beliefs, whose heart had briefly been lost to a Mohawk woman. A man with a unique perspective, in other words. And that is exactly why I'm sad that he didn't get his own game, because that's really interesting. That's really, 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 really interesting. Yeah, exactly, Viking. Like, that's... He didn't even... He wasn't a Templar. I, like, I love the twist of... You are a Templar. May the Father of Understanding guide us. Because that was... That was effective. Like, let's... I don't know. I'm saying I want another Haytham game, but honestly, it was a cool twist. It was very effective. Um... But that's just so beautiful. And the fact that he puts lost his heart to a Mohawk woman like Zio freaking influenced him so much. You know, 
And that is a huge part of his identity. And I didn't get that from the games. I didn't get their chemistry and just how much they were really spending time together. Like they had their a little setup in the woods. You know what I mean? Like they really liked each other. Hey, Dawn. Um, yeah. Okay, wait, let me look at my notes. But I, I just loved that line so much. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I misunderstood him just like Connor. <sighs> oh, I put similar to his father in that he had one goal and his quality of life suffered for it. And then Connor ended up doing the same thing. And it ended up, his people ended up suffering for it. And I understand Connor is not responsible for his people, uh, his tribe, but the Kenways, the Kenways are a stubborn bunch and they get something in their mind. For Edward, it was money. For Haytham, it was justice, vengeance for his father's killers. And then Connor, it was vengeance for his mom um, and getting his dad. And Charles, Charles Lee. Peace, Charles. Hey, Zabney. Okay, nice. It's nice that in the game, Zeo kind of questioned if Haytham truly cared for her, and the book confirms that he indeed did. Yes. It clarified a lot of things about their relationship. I was confused. I was like, is Zeo an assassin? Did she leave him because he's a Templar? No, she... She left him because trust was such a huge thing. Both of them knew trust was so important because it's this white man, you know, sharing a life, a bed with a native woman that already makes it so perilous. And he asked her to trust him from the beginning. That was like such a huge part of their relationship. And then he told her that Braddock, Edward Braddock was dead and he lied. And so to me, I'm like, of course they just fell apart because he messed up and he, he wanted to protect her. He wanted it to be over. He knew that Braddock would probably die later, but it makes sense why she was so upset about that and why she didn't look for him again, because is this, is this this colonizer? <laughs> And he lied. He lied about a huge thing. Like that was very important to her that Braddock died and he lied. So I think it makes perfect sense. Univex! Ethan's life was like a dark reflection of Ezio. With the death of his father, his father wanting him to be a kid and the Templars mentoring him instead of the, the assassins. Yes. <sighs> so much parental death. It's like Disney, right? Atham in truth, despite being a Templar, I feel he only became one due to Birch's influence. Yeah. And anger at his father for not explaining things sooner. I didn't even get so much anger at his dad. Um, and maybe it was there and I missed it. I just feel like he's so analytical. He's so smart. He's such a thinker rather than a feeler. And sometimes if he has emotions. It's just the way he copes is so in his brain and the way he looks at the world. And I'm kind of the opposite. I lead with intuition. I lead with feeling. And it's just, he wasn't some bloodthirsty guy who was just so angry, kind of like Kratos, like I'm gonna kill everyone in my path. No, it was very smart. It was very intelligent and he chose, like this is what I have to do. I have to find my sister and I have to get revenge on my father's killers. Birch just took advantage of a vulnerable Haytham. And I knew, I knew as soon as Haytham was playing on his own as a little kid and freaking Birch came over and was like, what are you doing? And asked all these questions. I'm like, you are black. You suck. Did anyone appreciate Achilles more? Like, oh, let me take you under my wing. 
Meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, Connor's like, oh, I guess I have to go to Achilles. <laughs> Teach me, old man. <laughs> it's just very different, you know, like their relationship was such a slow burn in the best way. Um, and even Tatham respects the fuck out of Achilles. Like, did you guys like notice that when he's watching his son fight and stuff? He's like, thank God for Achilles. <laughs> like, thank goodness that he's he taught my son all this stuff. Like, he was super impressed. Mmm, Haytham's stolen hidden blade still has the assassin symbol on it. There was a huge part of him that didn't want to let that go. And he knew, okay, assassin blood. I have assassin blood. And that's not such a bad thing. It just, it kind of makes me sad for myself because I feel like he is such a good in-between between assassins and Templars. Like he's such a good in-between and a good representation of like, you can pick and choose. You don't have to be gung-ho for either side. And he taught me a lot. He really made me think differently. Um, so I just wish there was a bit more gameplay wise. No, get off my land. Yeah, and was like hitting him with his cane. <laughs> um, yeah, we're jumping all over the place, but that's fine. Did you guys notice how Charles Lee and then the the gang at the Green Dragon were Haytham's first friends? Literally his first friends. And he was an adult because he wasn't allowed to play with other kids. He was very, like his tutors, Edward provided him with the best tutors, um, the best education, but he was alone. I think that did not even occur to Edward. You know, I think he really tried his best, but in terms of parenting and like raising a kid, that social life is, is important. Um, and Haytham didn't get that, so it makes perfect sense why he kind of stuck with Charles and despite later on in the book being like, I can't stand these men. <laughs> I can't stand these motherfuckers. He, you know, remained somewhat loyal to them and they were his first friends. And I don't even, I can't even call Charles a friendship with him because it was certainly more the way Haytham described it was like Charles looked up to him and looked down on everyone else. Charles Lee sucks in this book too. Even more so, he sucks ass. And he was converted to be a Templar by Haytham. But he's he is racist confirmed. He was so rude about Haytham just like kind of enjoying his life with Zio. He was so rude about Zio. Um, I don't know if you guys remember, but like he goes looking for Haytham and it's just a like for the first time in his goddamn life, Haytham is just living and just, you know, being with someone and existing and not working. And Charles finds them and scares the shit out of them. And it's just like, oh, I see you're having your fun. And it's just rude to him. And Haytham's like, you suck, dude. <laughs> no, I do want to play. I do want to play the King Washington DLC. Because um, Haytham really made me interested in George Washington. new money and so they would have kept their children away from the family mm -hmm. there was a lot of like distaste stigma i mean he so it wasn't that he couldn't stand him he liked it especially at first he liked being a tutor he liked teaching um it wasn't like oh this is my buddy i'll trust him with anything he just enjoyed being like okay and then this is how you stealth and this is how you kill like he admitted to really enjoying the feeling of the admiration and teaching him. But especially later on, 
he wouldn't say this to their faces, but he was just like, you guys are, ugh. Our theory during the AC3 playthrough was true. Hatham was doing his own thing and didn't really associate, associate himself with the others. Yes, during one of those breaks where he didn't know Connor existed, he was rescuing his sister. Um, he was doing a bunch of other stuff. Uh, and it really made sense to me. Yeah, Haytham hit Charles when he said he'd always had a soft spot for Indians. Yes. I don't know if I dog-eared that, because that was awesome. And he wanted to hit the guy when he was like, Connor, this this is my son. Um, and the guy was like in the bar. Oh, you're tasting the fruits of another forest. He almost hit him, but he didn't. I believe Oh, also listen to this. Accordingly, I had been less preoccupied with finding the temple and using its contents to establish Templar supremacy and more with bringing together on how but bringing together the two disciplines, assassin and Templar. I'd reflected on how my father's teachings had often dovetailed with those of Reginald, and I'd begun seeing the similarities between the two factions rather than the differences. But first, first there was the unfinished business that had occupied my mind for so many years. Was it finding my father's killers or finding Jenny that was more important now? That's weird. I mean... Yeah, I mean, in the lore, though, it's it's very clear that he was just like, ick. If that is the case, why did he still side with Lee? I know. To me, at that point, um, I think he wanted to die. That's really sad. That's really sad. <sighs> I think it's that. I don't know. I think he just wanted to die. Um, and that and my, that might simplify it too much, but right before he defends Charles in the book, he has this whole conversation with him and they fight so bad. And Charles is like, you're a terrible grandmaster and all this stuff. And that's what affects Haytham. Um, Cause he's just like so done with him. But then, oh yeah, I did dog gear it. Your concern for the child is touching, Haytham. You always were a great supporter of the natives. The words froze on his lips because in the next instant, I bunched some of his cape in my fist and thrust him against the stone wall of the prison. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, Charles. The order does not preach the senseless slaughter of natives. That was noticeably absent from my teachings. Do you know why? Because it's the kind of behavior that creates, how would you describe it? Ill will among those we might hope to win over to our way of thinking. And he's just like, Washington sucks too, but you also suck. I think he really holds it against Charles too, because Charles and Count... Charles's encounter with Connor when Connor was a, such a young child um, that shaped Connor's whole objective for his life yeah if he rejects Lee and the Templars he has to admit that everything he's done for the Templars and everything he's given up for them has been for nothing mm -hmm. doubling down on what he had worked for his whole life rather than Lee himself, right. And I think what activated him especially was um, Charles saying, you're a bad grandmaster. Like you're not doing anything for us. And so, it's just easier to double down than to feel again and to admit that you did bad things. <laughs> oh, 
all, with Lee and him gone, the Templars would have been eradicated in the colonies. So I don't think it was about Lee. Oh, and it's interesting because... Connor was like, no, we can we can make peace. We can make peace. But I think Haytham understood this kind of mature concept of there has to be a fight. There has to be a struggle to keep us all in check. Templars and assassins. Um, But it's interesting because, I mean, I would like to know what Connor did after all of this. But I think Connor knew that he was the man Hatham could have become. They were very similar in a lot of ways. But Connor was able to think for himself. He wasn't super attached to the assassins. Like, that wasn't what he was dying for. He was working for his community. Like, I feel like he understood the more positive aspects and worked for the positive aspects than Haytham. Like, Haytham was more on the dark side, the cynical side, whereas Connor was on the positive side. And Connor even writes, um... I understood that I was like the better version of my father or something like that. Oh, I think that he let Connor kill him. I think he let Connor kill him. I don't know. And maybe he didn't even realize he was letting it happen. Yeah, his journey robbed him of that dream. Yeah, because his life was so hard. It was really tragic. This was just like a tragedy. Um, yeah, I can't find it, but there is a point where Con from Connor's perspective, he says, I'm the man that he wishes he was. And that's confirmed from Haytham's perspective because he literally says, I look at him and feel envy. This is what my life could have been. And he's an assassin. And it's too late for him, or so he thought. Yeah, um, I don't know if I marked it. But he was like, dare I say I feel envy at my son? And it's got to be weird to... to meet your kid when they're an adult and it's like <laughs> I don't know it just made things make more sense for me right Haley mm -hmm. you could easily see Haytham had his hand around Connor's neck yeah yeah I agree Haytham wanted to give Charles time to escape let the Templars kind of live on in the colonies and um he also partly was okay with dying. It's not like, oh, I want to die. It's more just like, I will sacrifice myself. I think this will make more sense for my son. It's the right thing to do. Hi, Taylor. No, but Thomas Hickey does. He says a thousand pardons. Yeah. Hi, dearest. Thank you. <sighs> oh my God, guys. The part where he's like, when he sees Connor, sorry if I cry, but he sees Connor and he's like, 100%, that's my son. Because there's so much of Seo in him, like the stubbornness and the features. And it was in the jail. It was in that jail. <laughs> so cute <laughs> especially at the beginning to like hear his thought process like watching Connor was so cute like he was just so proud and yes envious but at least he admitted that he felt envy no I don't know a single parent that would admit that you know like that's why I respect him because he's able to identify like okay I feel jealous of this guy <laughs> 
he's my son and I love him and I, I, I really love him and I'm proud of him, but I'm also jealous because his life was robbed from him. Crying encouraged. Yes, he was extremely critical of other Templars, dictatorship, barba barbaric commands. Like he was like every single Templar, um, like the doctor who wanted to to um, make a bunch of money. He's like, you suck, you suck. <laughs> he really had a good belief system. Trope I will love until I die. Parents meeting their children for the first time and immediately knowing they're theirs. I know, it's so cute. <laughs> Not fighting for someone just to fight. It has meaning, yes. <laughs> yeah, fight for his people, not because he wants to fight for the good guys. Assassins and Templars are different in different eras. Right, and that's something I'm realizing too, because um, I really don't think, especially that, that phase. Hi, random bystander. That phase of time where Connor and Haytham were working together, they're objectives were not that different and actually aligned because Connor was focused on his people and he really thought there's nothing wrong with this but he really thought the American Revolution siding with the rebels uh the patriots um working with George Washington that that would be the best thing for his people um and then Haytham was more about not like Templar supremacy it wasn't this power or tension that he wanted and complete and utter peace it was like he did want what was best for everyone um and he i think he didn't trust that the natives could like stay alive um fight back and if you also think of like the templar ideology of we want peace it's like let me step in I will be the middle man. So you remember that scene in the game where one of the, the Templars ended up using force because he was like, we're going to buy this land. And Haytham, his thought process was, we're going to buy it because we're the better middle man between you and then uh, like the British or the Patriots because like they're both trying to take your land. They're going trying to take your resources. Um, and I was really pissed about that. But then hearing it from Haytham's point of view, I was like, oh, shit. You know, and if there had been more of a trust there, if Connor had met Haytham sooner, if like, I think they could have changed the fate of America. I think that they could have changed things for the natives, too. <sighs> no, he did. He believed in the assassin ideology. And I do, too. <laughs> I still do. Um, if you're just going based off of the creed and the order, I love, I love the creed. I, I just don't think most of the time, it just doesn't seem like there can be this group of people who can control everything and have everyone's best interests at heart. I just, I don't see that working out, but I do see more of chaos, like, everyone being free, but then having little communities. I think the focus should be on smaller, smaller communities. And maybe there's a way to merge. Maybe there is. And I'm not opposed to that either. But if I had to choose, I would definitely believe in those ideals more. Yeah. Believe that freedom and peace were intrinsically related, right? Yeah. No, he was he was an assassin through and through. He listened to reasons, yeah. He didn't blindly follow the creed like Achilles and even Adewale. He questions the creed too, but he also believes in it. Yes. Something about the Kenways, man. Yeah, Brotherhood is not without flaws. We saw that. Um What was What was Altair's I always forget his mentor's name. He was like technically assassin, but also a Templar. I don't know. Like sometimes it, the lines can be really blurred. And we'll see if there 
Like, I have a feeling the series is not going to shy away from showing some negative qualities about the assassins. Al Moelin, yeah. Hey, Bruno. I think if Edward had lived longer, Atham never would have turned out the way. <laughs> For all we know, Atham could have been the one leading the colonial assassin. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I know. I know. There's a lot of what ifs that I consider. If Edward had lived longer, if his, if Tessa hadn't rejected her child for saving her, if he had that mother's love and the mother's protection of like, mm, Reginald's kind of creepy. Like, let's not send you with him. If he just kept kind of studying and discovering his father's life, even growing up, I think he, if there were journals around or like Haytham, if he wasn't sent with Reginald, what if he met Ade? What if he like went on his own little pirate journey? Like there's just so many options, but the fact that Reginald Birch took him under his wing and just betrayed the fuck out of the Kenways, I really feel like that messed him up. I know Edward and Connor. I don't know why, because it makes me, it just makes me want to cry. Like imagine Con or imagine Edward meeting Zio. He would love her. I just got chills. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm very emotional. <laughs> if he the men met Ade, it would have never turned to her. Great uncle Ade. Stop. No, 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 not great uncle. Uncle. Uncle Ade. <laughs> if Connor met Ade, that's the great uncle. Oh my god. Can you imagine? Ege, hello. So precious. I'm just imagining Connor, like Haytham introducing Zio to uh, to um Edward. And Edward just being like, oh, you got a good one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the reason I want to play the tyranny of King Washington is because of Haytham's perspective of George Washington and just how objective it is. I have not heard an American talk about George Washington like this. I haven't heard, you know, someone who's critical of George Washington talk like this. Like, I just know the Hamilton version and just some weird glamorized version but Haytham was the first fucking person and you know Oliver Bowden who was just like it makes sense to me why they chose him as their leader he was like it makes perfect sense he's charming like he he might be a little meek and shy and make mistakes but he's a good representation you know and <laughs> do you guys remember <laughs> when he's looking at George Washington and Charles Lee side by side because Charles Lee is a jealous, vindictive fuck. Charles Lee wanted to be the commander, okay? And he was so mad that people didn't like him. And Haytham's looking at Charles and he's looking at George Washington and he's like, I totally understand why they didn't choose Charles. Charles has like, like this stringy black hair and he looks so British. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit, that is the big, <laughs> like one of your own literally insulted the fuck out of you guys, but I love it. So good. And it makes sense. It, it, it makes sense. I know he was a slaver. He also talked about, he talked about eradicating natives. I didn't know that. I mean, a huge thing was Connor finding out that he had ordered um, native tribes and villages to be burned down. That's why Zio died. Um, but I don't think he fucked with George Washington <laughs> after he learned that. But it's interesting. I don't know. I still think Connor was on the right side of history. I don't, I don't know. It's like lesser of two evils, honestly. 
when the right side of history should have been i don't i don't fucking know get them out get them out get the white people out get the colonizers out natives have their land george washington was nicknamed village destroyer That would have been so cool, bam. Okay, Bruno, I'm excited to try it then. Roger, thank you for listening. The essence guy who has entered into your soul, you unlock something amazing. You will be one of us, the true fans are new. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. Thank you so much for welcoming in me into the community. Um. Slavery was a huge part of the economy back then. Every major figure you can think of probably owned slaves. But then there were some, like, wasn't Lafayette not a slave owner? Let me see. He was a true abolitionist. So that's why I'm like, mm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna excuse people. I'm like, oh, is this part of the economy? Um. Then why were some people like, eh, this is wrong. Well, Diego, consider this. Consider his mom. So Diego says Connor shouldn't have broken his alliance with father when he found out who killed his mother. It made no sense. He was basically cornered. Katham fucked that up. And I know he really thought it through and thought it was going to be this great thing, but that was where Hatham and Connor differed. Hatham thought that Connor was going to take that the way Hatham would take that and be like, oh, thank you so much for expanding my brain. Connor is emotional and Connor is very based in trust and like his mom. Remember, Zio, um, Zio broke up with Hatham because Hatham lied about Braddock, about killing Braddock and Braddock being dead. That was a huge betrayal to her. And Connor said, like, what the fuck is wrong with you? How long have you been sitting on this information? It is so messed up that you just revealed it to me in the spur of the moment, like just both of you white guys just like get out of my head and so i think it makes sense like it, you might not have made the same decision but i think it makes perfect sense for his character given who his mom was given his spirit given his personality um hatham and connor are not the same man they're not the same person and <laughs> it was funny reading hatham's perspective because he really didn't think it would go wrong <laughs> He was like, and then Cotter's gonna see that I'm right. <laughs> like, no, that was kind of an asshole way. Yeah, it's, it's highly rated, Naruto. Yeah, I tried to manipulate Connor. Ate the nude Zio's fate. Yeah. And he even went through, like, that's the thing. And I get... <sighs> I get it. You're trying to remain in control of the situation. You're trying to filter information. I believe there's some, I don't think that all lying is bad. Like, let's just make that clear. I think there are some instances where, yeah, doing a little lie, especially if it's your kid to protect your kid. In some instances, that's, that's applicable and that's not wrong. But I do agree that there was this kind of like, manipulation low-key manipulation with good intentions because i think he was just very focused on well i would want to know this at this time you know and hatham doesn't know how to be a dad he doesn't know he doesn't know how to navigate this he only knows templar things and fighting and killing like the back of the book he's just like I am an expert swordsman. I'm skilled in the business of death. Simply, I am good at it. So he's just like, I, I, you know, I think it was just a very interesting scene of they're not the same person. Realizing they're not the same person. 
I've never played Prince of Persia. Oh my god. Oh my god, Caleb needs glasses. Just when he's editing and driving. Sorry, I'm just excited that he's going to have glasses. Send a pic with them on. I don't know. Okay. Can someone relate? Like, this is very exciting. The fact that he needs glasses. <laughs> what do you think of Jenny criticizing Edward as a father? Ooh. I'll just say this. How come? Actually, no. I answered my own question in my head. But let me give you my thought process. How come Edward was just giving her to a man? When he knew Mary Reed and Bonnie, even Caroline. And then I realized, look at how Anne and Mary Reed died. So I don't think... I think Edward definitely, he would even welcome criticisms. And that's why he's a good dad, in my opinion, because he would welcome criticisms and be like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. I think he was thinking about what it's like to have a daughter in that time period. And he weighed the options and was just like, what is the safest thing for her? You know, in this society, what direction can I push her in? And it's sad because I feel for her. I feel like she couldn't feel like she could argue with him or challenge that. And I'm sure they argued, but I think she's valid in criticizing it. But I also see where he's coming from. Oh, you refuse to take his cannon. You don't think he would have uh, just like, yeah. Especially with the end of Black Flag. Especially with the end of Black Flag. Um, where she's just like, I don't want to talk to you. Oh, he was going to give her to Reginald. <sighs> yeah, that's really hard to understand. Jenny was badass. Yeah. I, I want to say, too, I didn't enjoy that part of the book. I didn't enjoy the fact that she was sold to, like, being a concubine, like, sex slavery. And I didn't enjoy the fact that she was promised to Reginald. It seemed very different from the game. Yeah. Um... And also that whole thing of like the eunuchs and Holden being um, castrated and then unaliving himself. Like, I, didn't, I was like, okay, this is just, I think a little bit of a filler. Oh my God, he's so cute in his glasses. Hello, I'm streaming. Okay. No worries. You look really cute. Bye. <laughs> Glasses, Caleb! Glasses, Caleb! Size Hatham, who did you find most interesting? Um, I really liked Sio. I really liked Jenny. Yeah, I could sense some, like, little inconsistencies. I mean, Edward has black hair, so it can't be canon. Everything can't be canon. Let's just make up our own head cannon a tower cannon in the tower cannon in the mage cannon edward <laughs> yep 
gave her a choice, but she was not like the assassin heir. Who's Ade Wale's grandson? Will I find out more about Ade in future games? Yes, he's gonna be like Clark Kent because he's gonna have glasses when he's driving and when he's editing and then no glasses other times. Canon? I don't know her. I loved the variety in the lineage. Like if you just take Connor, Edward, Haytham, like if you look there, so closely related immediate family and they're all so different i think it's just an awesome lineage i love the kenway saga oh okay i just wanted to know if we hear more about him i loved i don't know if i um wrote this down or marked it but he has this line too where after he knows that connor exists he describes it as he's like, I don't have that nurturing feeling. I don't feel like paternal or protective, but I feel like I was asleep and I finally have woken up. That is so cute and it's so believable. Because I can't stand that shit. I can't stand that shit of like being cheesy and oh, it's my son. I must protect him at all costs. And suddenly I am going to be, I'm going to be the best father and everything's happily ever after. No, as someone who has childhood trauma, as someone who has chosen family and knows everyone's upbringings, it's really complicated. And I love that it's just such a kind of beautiful, realistic depiction of that, of learning you have this son and like seeing him and seeing the love of your life's features in him and feeling like you've woken up. I will suggest you to play Assassin's, Assassin's Creed. <laughs> yeah. Because I heard it was boring, Chango. Yes, Roche, exactly. Um, oh, and the title of the book, Forsaken. I loved how they, I didn't know what they meant by that. Um, and it was him talking about Benjamin Church forsaking the order, the Templar order. Um, oh, so when he's killing Reginald, um, I marked this, but hit, uh, Reginald goes, I tried to do what was right, Haytham, he said, his eyebrows knitted together. Surely you can understand that? I looked down upon him and I grieved, but not for him, for the childhood he's taken from me. That's literally the main reason I'm in therapy. And I just love when people get that. I love when storytellers get that. I love when writers get that. There's so much grief in realizing what was taken from you, what you've lost due to, due to trauma. And it's just, it's perfect. It's beautiful. And God, it makes hate them one of my favorite characters. Come on. Sorry. Um, I don't highlight my books. I just put a little mark in something I want to talk about. Oh, okay. <laughs> gave me Charles as a major general was with Washington too. It gave me an opportunity to compare the two. Charles a good deal taller than Washington, though with a certain aloofness compared to Washington's easy charm. Looking at them together, I saw at once why the Continental Congress had chosen Washington over him. Charles looked so British. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, it was it was Braddock he was talking about. Okay, so listen to this. Whether he had recanted the ideals of the order just as Braddock had done all those years ago, I didn't know. What I did know that he was likely to be the one behind the theft of supplies, blah, 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 that he had forsaken the goals of the order in favor of personal gain and that he needed to be stopped. So forsaken, forsaken the goals of the order in favor of personal gain. And let's be real, Haytham, he had forsaken the goals of the order to save his assassin son. Um, and it can also be interpreted forsaken as the title of the book as he had forsaken his assassin blood. So I love that title. I think that's really cool. Wait, I can't believe it described him almost as taller than Washington. I know, and in the game, isn't he like just like a little pipsqueak? I didn't know George Washington was so tall. Um, I love this towards like kind of in the middle of the book. He has this moment where he really felt like he was going to be killed by Braddock, Haytham, and he goes, I regretted that I had never seen my father's killers brought to justice and that I had come tantalizingly close to discovering the secrets of those who came before, but never entered the storehouse. And I wished that I'd been able to see the ideals of my order spread throughout the world. In the end, I had not been able to change the world, but I had at least changed myself. I had not always been a good man, but I had tried to be a better one. Oh yeah, Common Writer, I loved that. Um, I don't think that I marked it, but I loved that scene. But I loved learning that he was the one who saved Connor. Because if it was just up for, to the assassins, um, he would have died because they didn't cut properly. They had a bow and arrow and it didn't actually free him. It was, it was, I hate them. And he betrayed his order. I have not. I'm going to start it on Sunday. So now I think that's about everything I have to say. We talked about it a lot. Yep, that's pretty much it. Saving Connor at the gallows. Oh my God. I thought that was like probably my favorite part of the whole series. And especially knowing that, that, um, Haytham saved him because that messed everything up for the Templars. The Templars main thing was to kill George Washington at that event. And remember as Connor, you run and you have to kill Thomas before he gets to Washington. So that, yeah, he had forsaken the Templar beliefs tenfold by saving his son. And, but there was no doubt in his mind. He was like, I'm waking up, but I'm gonna save my son today. Do, 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 do. Let me put on my Templar ring. Yeah, let's watch Haytham's last words. Is it the boss fight or is it just... Ironic that Haytham chose love and it broke the order. Yeah, exactly why I'm thinking that. I don't know that like. From what I've seen so far, the Templar order is just so easily corrupted. I would like to see a good example of it. 
But Haytham was like the only good Templar in that situation. Audio only. Okay. I think it's this. Oh, they're putting the music in there too. It struck me when the bombardment began, and I began to pray Charles had made his escape. This might be my final journal entry. These words, my last. I hope that Connor, my own son, will read this journal. And perhaps when he knows a little about my own journey through life, understand me, maybe even forgive me. My own path was paved with lies. My mistrust forged from treachery. But my own father never lied to me. And with this journal, I preserve that custom. I present the truth, Connor, and you may do with it as you will. you guys were talking about because that was beautiful i loved hearing it in his in his words <laughs> rooftop scene oh let's let's watch this i just want to watch one more thing i just want it with the perspective Tell me something mm -hmm. you could have <laughs> killed me when we first met what stayed your hand curiosity Nope. Any mm -mm. other questions? No. Wait, wait. Okay. Curiosity. Any other questions? No. I have his answer in here. <laughs> According to my notes? No. What stayed your hand? When do you guys think that was? Okay, I found it. So tell me something, Connor said after some moments. You could have killed me when we first met. What stayed your hand? I could have let you die at the gallows, I thought. I could have l had Thomas kill you in Bridewell Prison. What stayed my hand on those two occasions also? What was the answer? Was I getting old? Sentimental? Perhaps I was nostalgic for a life I never really had. None of this I especially cared to share with Connor, however, and eventually after a pause, I dismissed his question with curiosity. <laughs> Megmage, what's so funny? <laughs> Tell me something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you could have killed me when we first met. What stayed your hand? Curiosity. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh. What is it the Templars truly seek? Order. Purpose. Direction. No more than that. It's your lot that means to confound with this nonsense talk of freedom. Time was. The assassins professed a far more sensible goal. Once that upon peace. a time. Freedom is peace. Oh no. Oh no. It's an invitation to chaos. Only look at this little revolution your friends have started. I have stood before the Continental Congress and listened to them stamp and shout. All in the name of liberty. But it is just noise. And this is why you favor Lee? He understands the needs of this would-be nation far better than the Jobinels who profess to represent it. It seems your tongue has tasted sour grapes. The people have made their choice, and it was Washington. The people chose nothing. It was Listen, no okay. There it was again. I almost envied him, how he looked at the world in such an unequivocal way. His was a world free of doubt, it seemed, when he eventually learned the truth about Washington, which, if my plan succeeded, Haytham! <laughs> 
not the plan would be soon. His world, and not just his world, but his entire worldview would be shattered. If I envied him his certainty now, I didn't envy him that. So that's what he's banking on, and it didn't shatter his worldview. It didn't, for whatever reason, because they're different people, because of their different upbringings, whatever. They're different mothers. You know, Zeo loved Connor till the end. Um, but it didn't shatter his worldview because he made something more than assassin and Templar. He believed in something greater, and it was his homestead. It was his community. People chose nothing. And I mean, this is kind of true. This is true. Seeking only to enrich themselves. Yeah. They convened in private and made a decision that yep. would benefit them. Yep. That's true. Oh, they might have dressed it up with pretty words. Mm -hmm. That does not make it true. Mm -hmm. The only difference, Connor, the only difference between myself and those you aid is that I do not feign affection. I mean, I mean, where's the lie? You know? Where's the lie? Yeah, he understands. He looked at me. Not long ago, I had said to myself that my words would never have any effect on him, yet here I was trying anyway. And maybe I was wrong. Maybe what I said was getting through. I think he learned from his dad. I just love, I love this guy. <laughs> that's my guy. That's my hate. Like, that's my guy. And don't send me clips of me shit talking him. And don't send me clips of me simping over him. I, that's my problem child. I, he's not even a problem child. He just did his best. <laughs> like, I reserve that comment. I am very selective with who I say did their best especially when it's a parent, okay? I never say that, but I reserve that for Haytham because he could have ended up horribly. He had a really rough go of it. Yeah, it even just like strengthened his views, yeah. The founders literally did independence because Britain wasn't expansionist enough in America. That's why I also like, like there were times even when I was mad at him playing the game where I was just like, you know what? This makes sense. No. Like you're speaking the truth and you're I love how critical you are of both England and the colonizers over here. He could have done a little bit Don't better. Do yeah. No way of what's on the other side. side. I loved I loved reading about this part too. Father. <laughs> Any last words? Wait. A poor choice. <clears throat> Come to check up on church? Make sure he's stolen enough for your British brothers? Benjamin Church is no brother of mine. No more than the Redcoats or their idiot king. <laughs> yeah. I expected naivete, but this... The Templars do not fight for the crown. Mm -hmm. We seek the same as you, boy. Freedom, justice, independence. But... Hmm? But what? <laughs> Johnson, Pitcairn... Yeah, Hickey. your boy sucks. They sought to steal land. Yeah. To sack towns, to murder George Washington. Johnson sought to own the land, that we might keep it safe. Pitcairn aimed to encourage diplomacy, which you cocked up thoroughly enough to start a goddamn war. Okay. And Hickey? George Washington is a wretched leader. He's lost nearly every battle in which he's taken part. The man's racked with uncertainty and insecurity. Only look at Valley Forge to know my words are true. We're all better off without him. Look, much as I'd love to spar with you, <laughs> Benjamin Church's mouth is as big as his ego. You clearly want the supplies he's stolen. I want him punished. Our interests are aligned. <laughs> God, I love him. God what damn do it. What you propose? <laughs> a truce. Oh. Perhaps. 
Perhaps some time together might do us good. It just makes so you much sense. You are my son, sense. after all, and might still be saved from your ignorance. <laughs> you piece of shit. It's just his I humor. Now, if you prefer. And he says he, like, notices his smile, Connor smile. <laughs> Shall we be off? Shall we be off? Do you even know where Benjamin Church has gone? I'm afraid not. I'd hoped to ambush him when he or one of his men returned here. It seems I'm too late. They've come and cleared the place out. I may be able to track him. I I actually, that's a great idea. I mean, I think it's pretty similar. Charles. June Williams. Oh, fuck off, Charles. No man reaches. Some Templars did fight for the British, yeah. Keep a moment. John will follow from a distance and keep watch over us. I'll signal you when I have need of your services. We're here to help you, along with those held inside Southgate Fort. Free me. Not until we're inside the gate. I can't chance an inspection of the gate going wrong. Oh, can we talk about how obsessed he was? He had love at first sight with her. And he's never had that. He was smitten. So by this point, I didn't I couldn't tell in the game. But in the books, he was like, that is the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. And it's like very honest because he's talking about like her energy, the way she speaks. It's a very honest love at first sight. I'll see you safe. You have my word. Look, look. I see it now. Thanks to whoever suggested watching this again. Do you know anything of Silas' operation? How many men we might expect? The nature of their defenses? Oh. You must be rather important to him if you were given your own escort. Sir, the enemies are hit. Shall I engage them? No. Let Jonathan and Thomas take care of them. As you wish. I wish you'd trust us. Though I suppose it's only natural for you to be wary. So be it. See? I'm freeing you just as I said I would. Now, allow me to explain. Go, girl. Let her go. We should give us a <laughs> What's the plan? Free the captains and avoid so detection. That's so cute. What of Silas? He dies. Yeah, Silas. I gave a four out of five stars. There were some part parts I thought were... I just didn't like the Jenny parts. Remember when I thought that those were her pet wolves? <laughs> and I was like, come on, Charles. Me, hey, some... I come in peace. Why are you speaking so slow? <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> what do you want? Well, your name, for one. I'm Gadzi Zio. Well, pleased to meet you. God, God's day. <laughs> Just call me Zio. Dio. 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 <laughs> and tell me why it is you're here. <laughs> I love that Connor has his mom's amulet an and and his dad's amulet such at the end. In one other place. Where? Well, it is forbidden for me to speak of it. I saved your people. Does this mean nothing to you? Look. I am not the enemy. Close to here, there is a hill. Meet me there. I love her and voice. We'll see if you speak the truth. And you can see in her face, she's like, he's kind of cute. That town hosts soldiers who seek to drive my people <laughs> the through these lines. <laughs> They're led the by a man known as the Bulldog. <laughs> Edward Braddock. You know him? Oh, fuck He's Edward no Braddock. Yeah. 
He sucks. Well, now I'm going to feed you your teeth. <laughs> He's you just so epic. The problem. Yeah. <laughs> You're hurt. That's <gasps> nothing. Here. I should stop the bleeding. Okay, she likes him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It wasn't necessary. That's cute. Well, thank you. Oh, there. Yeah, this is a love story. Move on. Meet me at Braddock's camp when you're ready. Why are you speaking so Use the slow? To mask your <laughs> and he's just like, sorry. <laughs> Having second thoughts? Hardly. They're well, both very beautiful. Go on. How did you? <laughs> it is time. We set up camp to the north. Meet me there. Yeah, that's mom and dad. Gentlemen. That's mom and dad. Let us away. That do be mom and dad. Let us away. Okay, guys, ignore the captions. <laughs> See, you've been busy. All these men are from many different tribes, united in their desire to see Braddock sent away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Abenaki, the Lenape. I remember this. I never took you for a coward, Edward. Come on then! He sucks so bad. Oh god, okay. Such arrogance. I always knew it would Yeah. No. Yeah, I just didn't understand no. for how long in the game they were like together. But it was a good chunk of time. They were like hooking up and stuff. You seem disappointed. I thought that I held a key that it would open something here. Shiny this hair. All there is. I expected more. Yeah, and that's why I think, Diego, that, like, if he had met Connor as a kid, what do they mean? <sighs> would have been better for everyone. It tells the story of Yotzitzizu, who came into their world and shaped it for what life might come. She had a hard journey, fraught with great loss and peril. But she believed in her children and what they might achieve. And though she is long gone from the physical world, her eyes still watch over us. Her ears still hear our words. Her hands still guide us. And and she comes on to him. Yeah, she comes on to him. You show me great kindness, dear. Oh, thank you. Oh, okay. Wait, I'm gonna cry because he doesn't I, know kindness. I should go. He hasn't known kindness. He hasn't. Oh, you Oh, we're on the yard 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 on the Next to you are ten. <laughs> on the girl washed aqua aging. Language sun wahua northern class. Newton. Ow, my stomach hurts from laughing. <laughs> Oh my From laughing. Highway to. 
Mirage. Oh, oh, interrupt Mirage. A Mirage announcement. Templar Etiquette so nice. Ah, etiquette so nice. The god gets so early. On he gusto. Gotta know I got god odds in this so era scorn X. <laughs> Ow, my stomach. Is it one day stuff? Is it one day stuff? <laughs> he wrote in a <laughs> Okay, that kills me because it really is like so confident about the other words, but then something. It was like, I don't know that word. That word I don't know. I do know all the other words. Do they? We're clearly children, Jenna. <laughs> Yogurt. <laughs> Their attitude. <laughs> or doonies. How was Nexi Dosa Easy Nakahonda di Yahaza? How did you? AI will take over. AI. <laughs> no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 oh my god, my humor is broken. <laughs> my, my, my humor is broken. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> it's not funny. Nice to join, young man. Um, I love that Zio taught him how to climb the trees, parkour in the trees. And Haytham said that she taught him at one point. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Haytham Kenway kills his father. <laughs> okay. That is so funny. I just searched Haytham Kenway and that came up. I, I think people are a little confused. 3DS, anyways. Well, maybe that's a good... I don't know. I think that's a good time to end. I don't know. I gotta get Yuna. Yuna's been outside for a while. Yeah, that made me really... <laughs> Not re-watching that death scene without captions. I got it. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to look at their relationship, which I did. Um, so I need to breathe. That was really funny. Why did it <laughs> obsessed with Honda dealer? Okay. Anyways, um, next stream is going to be on Friday and it's going to be oblivion. The TV floor. Yes, I will, Darth. I see Connor. I remember Connor talking about Edward. Uh, but then we're going to start Assassin's Creed Rogue on Sunday. Very exciting. So join the Discord. Stay updated. Follow my socials. Rogue! So exciting. I have no idea what to expect. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to film some today, Winter. I'm going to film some today. But I love you guys. I don't really know, Tech. I don't know what it would be a good order. Um, but thank you for hanging out with me. And... Join the Discord, follow socials, have a good day, drink water, be cool, and I'll see you. I'll see you. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, Rogue! Yes! Anyways, bye!